Today's children, growing up in cities, are isolated from nature. They have no idea that just outside the classroom window, the beautiful, diverse world of nature awaits them. We just have to open their eyes. There are so many different plants and animals, and all of them are connected in a complex web of life that begins with the sun. Plants use the sun's energy and mineral nutrients in the soil to make food. This is the basic food for the entire animal kingdom. So, you have small insects that feed on these plants. You have fishes that feed on water plants. Birds that feed on fishes and frogs. Snakes and lizards which form the reptiles. And finally, the large mammals, tigers, lions, the carnivores, who ultimately feed on all the lower animals. And then, there is us. We too are part of the web of life. As children learn more about nature, they understand more about themselves. All of us are connected to every living thing on Earth. Nature walks can help children discover that. and everything. Sometimes, I mean, I too don't know much about insects. I mean, to be frank, I had to also go and look up and find out the names and all that. But I am able to tell them a little bit about what they see. And they're very observant. They're even the little crevices and all, and you know, little between the grass, which I can't look for, the insects and all, they'll get there. Even the small, the tiny eggs and everything. They just like to be out, you know. Even the classes which you take and all, you can just sit out and talk, it's like rather a discussion, it's a dialogue between us, not that I have a book and I say, okay, let's go and see this. See, there's nothing specific nature walk in the sense, they're just observing the nature. You can't be specific and say, you go and look for what? 
it's not like if they find something they come and ask you like auntie what's this you know what have i found and then maybe we all get together sit down there and discuss what we have found i see nature nature and i see nests and i see our birds and we see trees they know that a tree also has life and you know you can actually find a child going and hugging a tree and really feeling for it and uh, they don't pluck any flowers they feel for it and uh, you can you don't even find a child kicking a caterpillar off of the off the way or something like that they pick it up and put it at the side and there's some of them who are so sensitive that they say oh don't stamp the grass so the other one says where where should i walk then you know sometimes we also climb trees Yeah. What happened? Yuck. <laughs> What is it? It's a crazy thing of that. <laughs> it develops the senses, you know, that's one thing I've noticed when you walk you got to be alert you listen to the sound you smell you can feel and uh, the children i think should develop their senses After a nature walk, it's time for the children to remember their adventures by recording their findings and sharing them with each other. 
Which one did you see? This one. Okay, I'll tell you about that eagle. It's called large eagle. What is it called? Large eagle. It the teacher, through books and pictures, can help the class learn about what they've seen. And the children can give their impressions too. Let nature enter a child's imagination, and it can express itself in many ways. Leaf rubbing is a simple activity. Just lay a leaf under paper and rub a crayon over it, leaving a colorful impression. This is also a fun way for children to learn about different types of trees and plants. The teacher can join in too, making posters to explain more difficult concepts. Assign a report on a specific creature. Let the child imagine. Just what is a bee? An aquarium is a complete world in itself. The fish feed on water plants, which grow in gravel. And snails keep the glass clean as they feed. This self-sufficient ecosystem can be enjoyed by the class throughout the year. Classroom activities create a better understanding of the world of nature. If children have the freedom to express themselves, this world will brighten the classroom and the child's imagination. They're very noisy, generally they're very noisy. And you know, some go crazy here and there. But we just don't generally control them. And it's all in the learning process, whatever they do. You learn with the kids. And you know, the subtle things, which you may really miss, you know, you really get it from the kid. 
we went there with the kids to the lake and they were watching the ripples and the movement of the ripples you know one child immediately said aren't our thoughts also equivalent to the movement of the ripples auntie you know immediately you know he's watching the ripples and he's able to relate it to the thoughts of a second standard child Suppose we've been learning about a snail, then we go looking only for snails, and we do find we collect those shells, or if we actually find one, you know, we sit and observe it and see how it moves around and where the feelers and the eyes of the snail and the breathing hole and all that stuff. We get back, you know, pick up one and bring him to class and study the behavior of the snail, what it eats and everything, and then uh, they write about it, maybe on a worksheet or in their book, whatever. even that's not copied from the board they write what they have understood and what they feel like writing how they express themselves and it's not always like facts because sometimes they write for creative writing we do something like i am a snail during playtime okay. children can play a game based on the food chain each child can choose an animal and experience the web of life for themselves By becoming an animal, children will have a better understanding of the cycle of life in nature.
Food chain is like how one person eats the other person, the other person eats the other person. So it's called a chain and the food. So the animal eats the food. And it becomes a, becomes a long chain like. The chain is like very long. It's a very long chain. That, uh, but I don't know that. Uh, the snakes will eat In a the way, man is the strangest the creature of them all. Only we have the power to destroy nature or to save it. Nature walks can help children to discover that they are connected to every living thing on the earth and create a lifelong love and respect for nature.